Hello, and welcome to Kathy Bennett Dove's studio and gallery, which includes her fabric art and photography. Kathy's fabric art progressed through different forms that develop and identify her style with fabrics, focusing on color, texture, and design. She started with obi sculpture, that's a new genre of fabric sculpture and assemblage art. A Japanese obi is a sash, usually about 12 inches wide by 14 feet long, and she designed them into her first art pieces, which were 20 inches high by 90 inches long. Kimono with obi was the everyday dress in Japan until a few decades ago, but they have all but disappeared now on main streets. The beautiful obi is wearable art. This is the top portion of a wedding kimono, an inspiration to her because of its gorgeous silk colors and design. Her obi was too pretty to store in a drawer, so she created a way to put it on display. Each obi is individually designed and woven, and she regards her art as displaying the art of the obi. The result is a three-dimensional assemblage sculpture. The obi is often what she calls interactive. The appearance changes in the light as you move past. It creates its own changes of perception. If you stand here, the pine needles seem silver and light. And over here, it is darker and bronzy. The light in the room can greatly affect the obi sculpture. The most difficult part is finding a way to keep the fabric in place without any apparent connection. She loves to create a sense of fabric flying through the air. Pine and chrysanthemums are symbols that are often used. Just a simple pair of chopsticks added focus. She respects the obi and never puts glue on it or anything that will ruin it. She adds minimum assemblage elements to emphasize an idea of the obi as she interprets it. Silk and Samurai seemed like a bold-colored masculine obi, so she added a sense of a quiver with pods on sticks reminiscent of arrows. Copper tubing and various dimensions of copper tie the color with the strength of the material. She chose a background with a metallic fabric coupled with the look of wine-colored leather to match the strength. Kathy loves every aspect of making an obi sculpture, such as cutting the wood for the frame and lining each piece with cedar because it smells great. She starts with one by three inch boards to make a frame, then lines it with cedar. She covers the frames with several layers of fabric, then connects two frames to create the long, narrow designs shown. Kathy's studio is all over the house. She cuts and sands frames outside with her compound angle saw. She cuts fabric on the floor or table and works on the floor to sew the obi onto the frame. She often works blind, sewing from underneath while balancing the frame on her legs. And she's part contortionist, reaching under and over the sewing by feel. A single tack to hold the heavy obi in an exact angle and still be invisible can take hours. Any assemblage element offers its own difficulties to attach. The 90 inch by 20 inch long narrow designs are about seven pounds a piece. Red Fan broke this long narrow design with fan shapes around a child's obi. This one is rather heavy in comparison. Some obi have a design on the back, and some do not. This obi back is even more lustrous than the front, accented with two colors, solid silver and solid red. The leaf spray adds another arch. Red is a Japanese ceremonial color. Sunset over Jade Moon is a combination of separate frames. She enjoyed creating a liquid look in the fabric at the bottom of this piece and obi sculptures are dustable. The next phase was to try to shrink her art so Tom, that's me, wouldn't have to hop, skip, jump around her frames. 
She started dyeing silk scarves. Then she started to use them to create designs in shadow boxes, again as a fabric sculpture. She still kept the fabric soft for most of them, like Blue Universe and Indigo and Orange. Kathy did stiffen the fabric and bake it for beaches. Her studio went to the backyard to spray lacquer and the kitchen oven and table to arrange the glue and sew it into place like the obi. She will use glue on her own scarves. Later scarves were designed with an airbrush, so her studio was in the backyard again. Once she had a studio room with a nearby sink for frequent hand washing, she was back to bigger pieces and fabrics. Kathy worked with batting to get a low relief sculpture, as here in Flying Kites. Soon she progressed to using just fabric with assemblage items again to create the three-dimensionality in the sculpture. She was now very consciously painting and sculpting with fabric. Each of her art forms uses the elements of color, texture, and design. In Fun with Euclid, she worked with darkening hues by folding, netting, and diaphanous fabrics. Sparkles help the fabric to disappear into tiny prisms of light. Geometric forms appear and dissolve. Summer Breezes was one of the most difficult pieces to hide thread stitches in the thin organza. She sewed with one silk thread, taking one thread of the fabric at a time, and made sure she didn't pucker it with too much tension. Blue Island was an experiment with using more than one canvas and cutting the canvas to add dimension as a structure for interweaving the fabric. The canvas doesn't need to be flat. Parts can be at angles. Three on the wall show the relationship of a shadow box, a photo, and a fabric sculpture with the same colors, a circle element for focal accent, and all are abstract. Before we go downstairs, I want to show her living room floor studio for deciding mats and frames. She likes to use natural light as well as indoor lighting before deciding the combinations. The floor is filled with prints to off-gas for two months before framing them. Again, she works on the floor and takes pictures of the whole thing from above. The living room is her main studio. She needs to get off the floor often to stretch. This art takes energy and flexibility. Felt is an interesting fabric to play with. It will hold a great volume and has wonderful bold colors. Kathy burnt the fabric with the heat gun outside so that the fumes would dissipate. If you do this at home, be careful not to burn your fingers. Felt Like Fun has fun things like glass spirals, wind spinners, and lollipop shapes. The green room of our gallery downstairs has more unusual pieces. Venting Happily uses a dryer vent, felt, and a happy flames fabric to create fire going up a chimney. Variations on a Japanese theme echoes the directions and shapes of a Japanese paper wallet. Chopsticks substitute for the vertical writing. Painting with 12 fabrics shows that you can layer fabric just as you can oil paint and create new different colors. In sunshine and city lights, shapes covered with fabrics represent tall buildings, while diaphanous fabrics move across like air and sunlight. 
My photo gallery section serves as a studio because I can rearrange pictures to see what colors work best with other things. I'm often reframing with new photos and seeing which hold interest and work well from a distance or close up. It also allows me space to arrange the photos for a large exhibit. Unusual for a gallery, our walls are different colors to get a better idea of what artwork would look like against home colors. Any room may totally usurp the usual function or we live with the art process around us. Other parts of her studio are the storage areas for fabrics, obi, and photo prints. Upstairs is a storage room for unfinished pieces that got stuck that need a place to be before they are ready for show. Kathy's art decorates the whole house for us to enjoy. We put her art up to look at, consider, and enjoy. The gallery downstairs is especially dedicated to display. If you want to try any form of art, don't wait until you get a studio. Start now, on your lap or on any surface or space. Creativity depends on you, not a room. Happy creating! Thanks for visiting.